Recently, we had a CPI numbers released, a Fed hike in July, PCE, GDP, and initial and continuing job claims released. How has this affected the market? Well, as an initial thought, we are seeing mortgage applications decline, which is showing a mortgage demand to be at its lowest level in two decades. Why are we seeing this? Well, part of the reason is interest rates rising and according to the NAR, home prices being 80% more expensive than in June 2019. That is 80% in just three years. Both of these factors are affecting affordability. Part of why we are seeing that, that the Fed brought their federal funds rate to near zero and purchased 120 billion per month in mortgage-backed securities and treasuries during the pandemic on top of dumping a lot of money in the economy. Now the Fed is responding to the market that came about because of all this with Fed hikes. I get a lot of questions about whether the Fed hikes equals mortgage interest rate hikes. Did my rate just go up three quarters of a percentage? Simply put, no. You have to keep in mind that the Fed does not control interest rates. The Fed controls the overnight lending rate amongst banks, which affects short-term interest rates. However, the Fed hikes, GPD numbers, PCE numbers, and job claims affects how the markets react, which in turn affects rates. So let's discuss what's happening. First, are we in inflation or a recession? The Consumer Price Index on July 13 revealed that inflation was again a lot higher than what was expected. Inflation rose another 1.3%, which was higher than the initial 1.1% expected. This has been a total 9.1% increase year over year. Over the next three months, if we keep getting readings like this, then we could be looking at a 10% year over year inflation number. Some believe that we might not see it peak in inflation until fourth quarter. The Federal Reserve is still in the mode of fighting inflation and the NBR has not officially announced a recession. However, let's look at the data. As we all know, Fed did another 75 basis points hike to the federal funds rate on July 27th meeting, bringing the federal funds rate to a range between 2.25% to 2.5%. Chairman Jerome Powell's claims that a second hike of this level was necessary and rejected the notion that we are in a recession. For now, Powell states that the continued goal of the Fed is to return inflation to its 2% goal if we are to have a sustained period of strong labor and market conditions that benefit all. To accommodate this goal, Powell stands by continued rate hikes to the federal funds rate. However, Powell advocates for both a high rate hike and a decreased one. Usually large increase could be appropriate at our next meeting. That is a decision that will depend on the data we get between now and then, thinking as clearly as possible. As the stance of monetary policy tightens further, it likely will become appropriate to slow the pace of increases. As such, we are not sure what the Fed hike will do in September meeting. However, keep in mind that a Fed hike does not necessarily mean interest rates increase. Rather, the hikes in the federal fund rates causes the bond market to react, which then causes interest rates to react as we just previously discussed. After this July Fed hike, the interest rates did not really increase at all. However, let's take a look at the GDP numbers and what occurred there. What also came out in July 18, 2022 is the real gross domestic product or GDP numbers for quarter two advanced estimate. It revealed that the GDP decreased nine tenths of a percentage according to the advanced estimate released by the Bureau of Economic Analysis. As you can see in the chart, GDP has decreased for two consecutive quarters with it increasing 1.6% in the first quarter. Although the first release is just an estimate with the second being released in August 25th, 2022, many are saying that the two consecutive negative GDP numbers is an indicative of a recession. However, it is the National Bureau of Economic Research, NBR, that officially declares recession and expansions. They currently have not made any judgment and or announcement that we are in a recession. But a second straight negative GDP number meets a long held basic view that we are in fact in a reception. The next thing that came out was the jobless claims. This is an indicator will be in unemployment numbers. Currently, the initial jobless claims, which measures individuals filing for unemployment benefits for the first time, totaled 256,000 for the week ending July 23rd, a decline of 5,000 from the previous week's revised level. The second round of jobless claims shows an additional decrease of 4,000 for a total of 260,000. 
Continuing claims, which measures those who continue to receive benefits after their initial unemployment claim, rose 48,000 to 1.4 million, which is the highest level since beginning of April. It will be interesting to see what the BLS jobs report shows tomorrow, August 5th, 2022. So simply put, the Fed, according to Powell, does not see the economy in a recession and continues to combat inflation. The MBR has not officially announced a recession. However, the data with two negative GDP numbers seems to indicate a recession. We will be looking closely at future market data to see how things progress. The PCE or Personal Consumption Expenditure came out on Friday, July 29, 2022, which measures the change in prices of goods and services purchased by consumers. The PCE rose by 6.8% in June as compared to the same period last year, according to the data released Friday by the Bureau of Economic Analysis. This falls just shy of the 6.9% year-over-year rate in January of 1982 when inflation was declared from one of the highest levels in U.S. history. Why? Well, amongst other things, June saw gas prices in record levels and the PCE price index reflected those gains. Food prices increased 11.2% and energy prices grew 43.5% according to the BEA. The Fed likes the PCE numbers because it can be manipulated by the Fed because it is directly affected by federal monetary policy. If this number came in low, then they could have said that their efforts fighting inflation has been working. However, it rose. So it'll be interesting to see what the Fed does during their September 20th meeting. All right, so what does all this mean as it relates to the markets and rates? What we have seen so far is that markets have not reacted drastically to the data that we have gone over. So far, rates have moved up and down a little over the past few days, with the markets reacting to all of the data being released. The mortgage bonds broke beneath the 100-day moving average and are now in a new range. The 10-year Treasury broke to the upside of 2.79%. However, I've not seen a huge impact to rates thus far. The Mortgage Daily News still has the average at 5.5% as indicated in the chart. In fact, we have seen interest rates stabilize so far. So that is your market update for now for July and August. For the next market update, we'll be looking closely to see what the Fed does during their September 20th and 21st meeting. Before that, we will also have more CPI numbers and jobless claims released. The Fed will take all of this into consideration when they decide what to do next.